So, hello everyone. Well, my, my name is uh, Adolfo. Uh, I am a curriculum manager for Red Hat, uh, working on, uh, on cloud technologies, uh, including OpenStack. Uh, before to this position, I was a, a solution architect for, for Stack Ops, for one of the OpenStack uh, startups. Uh, what we are going to do here is to uh, deploy Neutron. It's a, it's a quite a dummy deployment, so you will see. We are going to use some uh, some, some virtual machines. You will you you have uh, we have running on the on the laptops. Okay. So first first thing to do is to log in on your on your laptops. You 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 will see that there is a, a student uh, login available. So just Try Staden as the password. No, not a deal, a big deal there. Okay. Once there, you will see that there is a, a PDF called 2 uh, Neutron Server. Just open it. It's this one. It's the, the guide we will follow to do the, the workshop. And uh, well, just just to explain you a little bit what, what is the environment we are going to play with. Each of the laptops we have configured uh, are named uh, like host X. So each of you will have will have a different uh, number for that uh, X zero one two blah blah blah. Okay. The same with the with the virtual machines. So in order to log in in your virtual machines, you will have to log to log into server. You see here, server X uh, minus A and uh, minus B, okay? The X is the number of your host. So just uh, look right now, open to terminals, look, look right now and see if you have any issues there. Uh, also with me, I have some colleagues from Red Hat, uh, Forrest, uh, Chen, and um, Rob should be here or will be soon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, feel free to, uh, uh, if you have any issue, ask them, and they will be able to help you on on this. Okay. Also, uh, well, before starting, you will see if you have been in the previous in the previous uh, workshop run by by Rob, you see you see here that we are going to play with Packstack. That is the best tool in order to deploy. Uh, uh, OpenStack, at least for, for dummy environments, that's great. Okay, so uh, uh, before starting with Packstack, I, I would like to give you a, an overview. I don't have a slides, uh, unfortunately, but I want to, you to have a, because, uh, an overview of what is the architecture we are deploying here. As you see, we have two virtual machines. We are deploying one virtual machine as the controller node. If you have read a little bit on the on the OpenStack docs, the usual architecture uh, they recommend to deploy is a three node. So we have a controller node with the core services, a network node with Neutron, that is the one we are going to deploy here, and uh, one or more uh, compute nodes. This is, uh, this is really a, a non-production ready environment or for light uh, environments, but that's the reference architecture for, for OpenStack. What we are doing here is not that one because of the resources we have in the, in the laptops. What we are doing is uh, deploy both uh, the compute node and the controller node on the same machine, okay? This is your server A. And then we are deploying the, the network node on the server B. That is going to be the the one where a uh, neutron is going to be executed. Okay, also, uh, maybe, I don't know if you are familiar with neutron and <laughs> there, there is too many people to know about your backgrounds and, and everything, so just, just want to introduce you to three concepts of uh, networking on, on OpenStack. Uh, most of the most of the, the idea the idea of neutron itself is to be an abstract layer to a, a SDN or hardware a plugin we have below it. Okay, so 
what we are playing is with uh, nice uh, concepts we are able to play with uh, without getting in trouble with uh, uh, low level networking okay so just keep in mind three concepts we, we should uh, we are going to play with we are going to have uh, networks for for us the networks are going to be isolated uh, networking environments something similar to the VLANs okay in the in the physical world the other thing is uh, sub networks these are the going, the ones that are going to be associated to IP addressing okay because on the network we are not going to have any IP addressing. The good thing about this is that uh, we are going to be able to have several networks, uh, I mean, several uh, subnetworks with different IP ranges or, uh, associated, thanks Rob, associated to the same network, okay? That's quite flexible, okay? Uh, and the last, we have networks and networks, and the last one, the last concept I want, I want to introduce you are ports. The ports are similar to, to the physical mix, so they have a, a MAC address associated. So you, you, when we plug a virtual machine running on an open stack env uh, environment against some network, so it gets an IP, we are going to plug that virtual machine using, that port, using a port to that sub network, okay? So, uh, what we are going to do right now is quite basic uh, stuff in, in OpenStack networking. Later, Forrest uh, will introduce us to uh, DHCP servers, uh, services so we can uh, deploy virtual machines and have a DHCP service, usually DNS mask queue, provide automatically an IP to the, to the virtual machine, okay? So, these are the three uh, concepts we are going to manage. Next is uh, VLAN versus uh, great tunnels. Uh, on most of the of the manuals, and if you have uh, go through GitHub or look through Google or whatever uh, for deploying uh, OpenStack, most of the people recommends to use great tunnels because it's quite easy to to implement. The issue is that. Uh, for product, uh, we are going to use that, okay? But uh, for production-ready environments, it's, it is uh, uh, advised to use uh, VLANs. The issue with VLANs is that uh, you have to configure the, the underlying hardware switches you have behind. So for most of the people, since people usually don't have access to a dedicated switch there, they just uh, use gray and, and forget about that. The issue is that uh, reading through, because <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't run the test myself, uh, you lose something like a 20, 30% on production ready environments using gray tunnels. So if you are going to get something big, uh, forget about this configuration and go with, with VLAN. I will show you it's not so, in, in the OpenStack uh, site, it's not so difficult. It's, it's quite similar to the Great Tunnels configuration. The issue is that on the, on the networking side is uh, it's a little bit tricky, okay? And, well, let's start with it. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, uh, what we are going to do is uh, first run a uh, pack stack in order to uh, install the network node. Right now, if, if, if you have some experience with, uh, with OpenStack, you will see that we have uh, an all-in-one instance deployed on uh, server A. The good thing about pack stack is that if you tweak it a little bit, you can create a, not a single node, but more complex uh, configurations. So, so what we are going to do here, so better, uh, first, if you haven't logged in, log into, into your server X uh, minus A virtual machine, okay? Like I did. The password there is Red Hat, okay? Same in, in server B. Okay, so what we are going to do is well, uh, you see that we have there 
uh, answer dot tx in the in the slash root, okay? So just edit that one. Yes, I use nano. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, if you look for, uh, you see here that we need to change some, some parameters. The important one, since Neutron is installed, uh, uh, config Neutron install parameter is already set up to yes. So you just need to change the, the two ones that includes the, the IPs, okay? The config neutron server host and the config neutron metadata host. Uh, the issue there, you see that this is a X, uh, you see 172.25 and a X plus 100. What that means is that you have to add uh, to your machine, imagine you are in host one, you need to add one plus 100. So it's 101, okay, 101. Okay, so that's uh, for each virtual machine, the two, the, the two virtual machines we are managing, uh, they have two uh, virtual interfaces, okay? One is the public one, that is the uh, X.10, uh, and the, the other one, the X plus 100, is the private one, okay? This is the minimum networking you need on a, on a node in order to deploy Neutron. Okay, so let's let's go to config. Let's go to change this. Change this. Uh, okay. So first, you see that we this is a, a, well the server server A has the dot ten, and the server B has the dot eleven. So uh, what we are going to do since we are going to deploy the network node outside uh, on on server B. Okay, right now it's running, all the, all the neutron services are running on the, on the server A. What we need to change is the IP to point to the, to the server B1, okay? So it's 11 there. And we have to do the same with the metadata. What is this? Uh, if you play with Packstack later, uh, this session, you will see that you need uh, to maintain uh, one of the virtual needs you are using without uh, using it on the Neutron configuration. And I mean, in, in OpenStack, we have, in the reference architecture, we have three networks. We have the management network, that is the one that all the services in OpenStack uses to communicate against each other. And that in, includes also uh, the the messaging broker, QP, RabbitMQ, whatever you use, and the uh, database, MySQL, uh, Postgre, whatever you want to use there. Uh, it is important that when you play with Packstack, you set up, you use, uh, don't set up the networking stuff, and you will see it with with Forest on the on the same place, uh, on the same net uh, nick that Packstack is using to deploy the services. Okay. For, for us here means that instead of using the public one, we are going to use the private one. That is going to be our management network, okay? So let's look for the metadata and do the same. It's just changing this. I don't know if you have experience deploying OpenStack by hand, but this is quite an improvement, <laughs> really. Okay, so we are done. You see there the, the Neutron uh, KS password, the Keystone password that is set up to Red Hat, but that should be already set up there. So you don't, you don't have to change that, okay? So if we get, go out from here, now next is just run pack stack in order to, to deploy the network. You see here that we don't have anything, any service. On the, on the server be running, okay? And if we go to server A, you will see, okay, we have everything running here, okay? So, now that you have it, okay, on your server A, it's just, okay, it's set up. 
Okay, so let's run Packstack in this way. If you haven't been on the on the previous session with Packstack, what you do is first generate a, an answer file like this. Okay, you can place it wherever you want. And later you can modify that answer file. It, it has uh, the, the, the one we generate is the, has the default uh, values for the parameters. So you can deploy an environment with that. But if you want, you can enter like we, we have done and, and, and tune it a little bit. So once you have everything set up, you just run packstack against uh, that file. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, it's going to take a little bit of time, but not so much. If you have been on the previous session, deploying the whole environment takes like 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. But this is quite, quite fast. Once you have deployed the, most of the environment, this is about just redeploying Neutron should, should not take uh, so much time. Okay, so. We are going to wait until this is finished. Uh, any of you that has any problem, just let us, let us know so you can follow up the, the workshop. As I said, uh, if you are able to, once uh, you decide to go in production, uh, try to get a, a a dedicated switch for, for playing with 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 open stack with neutron. Okay. Uh, I will show you later uh, where the where the configuration options for VLANs uh, is located. It's quite is 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 as complex as configuring grid tunnels. Uh, and it's just it's just about um, providing a range of VLANs that you want to use for uh, the networks, the virtual networks that we are creating in OpenStack to uh, uh, be implemented in the physical networking world, okay? So the only thing there is that, as far as I know, <laughs> you need to have a continuous range of VLANs. So uh, take care, if you are planning to go, to go with this configuration, take care and when you uh, uh, deploy your data center or whatever your 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 infrastructure, okay, that that could that could be a that could be a problem. Yeah, let me know. This is a only, only one node. What we have right now, uh, the the one I provided you is is all in one. What we are doing right now is, uh, this is the one I provided you, but the one we are configuring, the one, the one that Packstack is, is configuring right now is, is, uh, is a controller and compute node on server A and a network node on server B. So the, the gray, gray tunnel will be configured uh, from the network node to the compute node. So from server B to server A, okay? So it's not all in one. It's you have the uh, the networking between the two. It's quite similar to a three node, but uh, it's just uh, running the uh, the virtual machine inside the inside the controller node. That is not very recommendable, but it's what we are we have right now okay. <laughs> because of the resources. Yeah. No, uh, I, I mean on the on the subnets. Uh, you mean the environment? Yeah, but that that subnetwork is uh, created is a uh, is created over OpenV switch. That is one of the plugins of, of Neutron, so it's independent on, on the on the physical NICs you have on the machine. Okay, well on the on the virtual NICs you have on server A or server B. It's completely independent. This is, uh, since we are working with grid tunnels, uh, you are, 
a, uh, a tunnel is created against the, the virtual interface, the, the one of the virtual machine that you are using, and then this is uh, sent to the network node, for example, and there it gets, it, it gets out. But it's comp uh, you are not, uh, uh, it's completely independent from the, from the virtual nick of the virtual machine, I mean. Okay, so you can play with the, the, the subnets and the networks we are, we are going to create are, uh, you can think about those as, as virtual. So you can create as many as you want with the IP ranges you want, uh, plug in as many VNs as you want. Well, the, the ones you can place in, in the virtual machine we have as a controller and, and as a compute node. And, and, and that's it. It's, you, you have to, in VLANs, when, when you set up VLANs, you have to think a little bit uh, how to implement that on the physical world. But with GRE tunnels, you just uh, configure the GRE to go through a dedicated, well, to a, through one of the uh, NICs that uh, is being used in the, in the compute node and in the network node, and that's it. You forget about touching any of the, of the physical world. Okay. The issue there is that this is good if, if you want to do uh, demos uh, as this one, or if you want to uh, run proof, proof of concepts or, or, or that, but uh, if you are going in production, uh, this is going to become a nightmare from the, the time you get up a third, mach a third virtual machine in, the, in, a computer, in a compute node. That's, that's going to be a problem. Okay, so we are done. Yeah, 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 in one. We are setting up in server B, okay? Yeah, you just need, you configure, Neutron is a, is a set of different components. So you, you can, what, what we are going to do, the usual uh, deployment you are going to do is to create, use a, a physical machine, not a virtual one, a physical machine, and install all the services of Neutron there. Okay, you will also have to install some auxiliary services on the compute node and on the, uh, mainly on the compute node and on the controller node, but you will deploy everything on, on the network node. I am saying this because uh, you can get all the components and put each one on a different machine if you want, or if you want to do high availability, you can you know, create two network nodes and put some HA proxy over it. You can, you can play with it a lot. The usual deployment you are going to do, and it's the one, the most usual one out there, is, is just a network node, and that should be enough for most production environments. I, I have, the, on the environments I have deployed, I, I, I never uh, have seen a problem with that. The only, the only issue you are going to have if you deploy like this on a network node is that the, when you, when you create too many subnets, you have many users, uh, and you create many subnets, networks, ports, you will see that the, OB, uh, the OpenVSuite database, uh, because this, this SDN uses a, a MySQL database as a backend, is going to suffer a lot. So if you have it over a, a, a slow disk this, uh, drive, this you are going to get problems there. But that's the only issue you are going to face. But this is on a, on a quite, Big environment, okay. Yeah, yeah. What we are doing is, uh, well, I, I am deploying Neutron, Neutron Server and OpenVSuite. And Forest is going to deploy a DHCP, okay, the DHCP agent and the L3 agent. That are the other two big uh, components of Neutron. This one's on the network node. You deploy, what you deploy, uh, well, in Neutron, you have, neut uh, you have this component. You have Neutron Server, the Neutron L3 agent, the Neutron um, DHCP agent, okay? So usually you deploy everything on the same, on the same machine. That is the, ne they call it network node, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is just to deploy the Neutron Server, uh, neutron server and open switch. So, I am going to play with networking because I am going to deploy an instance, but it's going to be just a stack, it's going to be dummy stuff. I, I, I don't have DHCP, so I, I am going to have to create a port and assign a, a sign a IP, okay? Yeah. 
I will show you. Okay. Okay, going through the Yes, if you can. Okay, if. Uh, okay, going through it. Uh, okay, let's let's first. Uh, yep. On server A, but uh, you run it on on server A, but it's going to install uh, server B. Okay. Five minutes. Well, <laughs> okay, okay, so, well, I have five minutes, so, <laughs> okay, so, well, better, better, since this is just, uh, this is, is a stuff just to uh, get an overview, I am going to get through it quite fast. Well, uh, if you are familiar with Linux, that I suppose you are, uh, you see that the, the service is called Neutron Server, you see, these are the services I, I, we were talking about, the, the, the Neutron Server, the Neutron L3 agent, the Neutron DHCP agent. The rest are auxiliary services, okay? So we have also the metadata. Metadata, you will see when you play more uh, harder with, with VMs, you will see that you will need it to deploy virtual machines in order to get uh, data uh, sent by the user when at the deployment time. You see the OpenB Switch agent. This is this is the one uh, for OpenB Switch, but you can play if uh, if you have, for example, Cisco or Arista Networks infrastructure, network infrastructure. You can deploy uh, with uh, the plugins of these uh, uh, network hardware providers, so you can get the most of the functionality they are providing, and you can offer your your cloud users. Uh, quality of service, for example, uh, for their some networks and all that, all that stuff. Okay, here, here we also see that uh, these two companies just to show you that Neutron uh, uses as a backend both uh, MySQL, okay, on the 3306, and uh, Cupid, that is the one we are, we are using right now on Red Hat as a messaging broker backend on the 5672. And the uh, the lock uh, where uh, well the, the lock location okay the server dot lock okay playing with the, uh, with the static ports what we are going to do here is just to deploy a, a virtual machine uh, uh, with a IP we are going to uh, assign statically to that to that virtual machine how we are going to do that. First, we are going to create a, a network that we call here internal, internal one. Then we are going to create uh, some network. You see that we, we set up no gateway, we disable uh, DHCP, and uh, well, that's the range we are going to use. Really, we can use there whatever uh, range you want to use. The only thing is that never use, if you have a management network, never use ma the management network range. That is something that they miss on the on the manuals because if not, you are going to get a mess with roots on the. Yeah, if you are deploying uh, when you when you create networks like this, I am talking about Grizzly, okay? So I don't know in Havana, but uh, uh, never create subnets that uses the IP range of the management network you are using for your open stack environment, okay? That that's been on the safe side. Okay. Okay. So uh, in this way, we disable the with no gateway. We disable the possibility to go out. Okay. So virtual machines by default, if you create a, a sun network, uh, you will be able to uh, ping to the outside world. And uh, with this, we we disable that possibility. And and also, since we don't have the DHCP agent deployed, we we don't want DHCP there. We create, a, if you are familiar with Nova, what you need uh, to, to deploy a virtual machine, you need an image, a flavor, and a, a network you want to deploy it on. Okay, so what we do first is create the, the flavor. This, this, this flavor, well, it's uh, the one is for the number of virtual CPUs you are going to have, 
the the twenty is for the size I think of the virtual disk inside the the virtual machine you are going to deploy, and the three one two is the name and the number of run it's going to have. Then since we are as I have told you, we are going to deploy it statically. So what, what we need to do is, if you remember from, from the beginning, in order to plug a virtual machine to a subnet, we need a port, okay? So what we are going to do is to create that port. Usually, you deploy Neutron in the, with DHCP, that this step will be performed by the DHCP agent. But here, since we don't have it configured, we are going to do it ourselves. So what we do is just uh, over the network we have, the sub network we have created, you see the 192.168.30.0, okay? We are going to get one of the addresses there, the 100, and create the, the port. So we are creating a virtual NIC, okay? So like a, yeah, a virtual network card, to say that. Now what we are going to do, and we have plugged it to our network, okay? To internal one. So now what we are going to do is to uh, plug the virtual machine on that port, okay? First, as, a, as I said, we need a flavor and a network and an image. So we create, with glance image create, we create a, a, an image, the image is small, that is the one we are going to use in order to uh, execute the, the VM, to run the Nova boot, okay? So here you see you run a Neutron port list. You will see that the port is there and is created with the right IP. And finally, we run the Nova boot with the flavor we have created, with the port, the port ID we have created, and with the image we have created. And the name is a small one, okay? So if we do a show port, it will show that the device ID is associated to our, to our virtual machine. It's the ID of our virtual machine. If you do something like Nova List, you will see that the ID is the same that the, the one that is listed there. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like this. Okay. So, so, sorry I get out of time. But uh, if you have uh, any, any question or if, if you want, any, you have any issue, uh, let us know so we can, we can support you on solving them. Uh, yeah, I can, I can. I can yeah, I spend some time with you right now, no problem. <laughs> should, should work fine. That, that should not be a, a problem. Okay, so I think we are out of time, no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me know if you have any issue, if you want to rerun the, the session. And thank you yeah. for coming. <laughs> Thank you.